Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. We're taking an early look at Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. We're actually looking at the emulator right now just to get an early preview. Of course, a lot of this stuff doesn't work that you would expect to work on a phone or tablet, but we're going to give it our best shot. You're going to kind of walk through it with me for the first time here. So we're going to slide to unlock and slightly different animation here, kind of this little dotted pattern. We're going to point out the little stuff too, just along the way. So the first thing that they talked about that you can change or that has been changed is the way that widgets are added to your home screen. So typical scenario here, we've got lots of icons on our home screen. And in fact, let's add some more uh, just to crowd it up a little bit so that the, what I show you next would make more sense. So let's say we've got a lot of icons here on the home screen and we want to add a widget. So just like an ice cream sandwich, we go over to widgets and let's add bookmarks. And I should mention that this is going to be slow uh, because it's the emulator. Emulators are always slow. One of the, 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 the cornerstone features of, ice, er, of Jelly Bean, that is, uh, is that performance should be better, or at least perceived performance should be better through Project Butter to make things, quote, buttery smooth. So we're excited to see how that works on an actually phone. I'm going to pick up a widget here. But as you know, if you've used the bookmark widget, it's huge. It really doesn't fit. Uh, except for on its own screen most of the time. So as you can see, as I move it around the screen, it'll resize the bookmark widget to however it will be required to fit. So if I go over here in the corner, uh, it'll be a different size than if I put it down here. So if I release it, it resizes it dynamically. And so I can actually fit it on that home screen. Another cool feature is once you have stuff on your home screen, let's say I want to move this around, but I've got icons in the way. Watch, the icons will move, move out of the way so that I can properly place uh, my widget. So that's a nice little feature uh, of Jelly Bean, certainly. So let's move these back around so they're not uh, covering up the Google search bar. Another new feature of Jelly Bean, very small feature, is if you tap and hold on the background, you get a slightly different UI than what you got uh, in Ice Cream Sandwich, kind of this bigger in your face chooser thingy. Uh, now, the next thing we want to talk about is the notification tray, uh, because that has been revamped, or most importantly, developers can tie into the notification tray to do all kinds of cool stuff with notifications. Uh, they can do play controls if it's a music player. Uh, they can put special buttons if maybe if it's a Skype app there could, and you may have a missed call, there can be a call app right in the notification tray. And if I open the notification tray now, you won't notice much of a difference except that the clock and date are bigger. Kind of, kind of more beautiful, I think. Uh, and of course, we have got the button for settings. So let's try to put something up in the notification tray. Going to be creative here and set an alarm because I know that'll show up in the notification tray under certain conditions. So we will set an alarm for one minute from now or thereabouts. So we're going to scroll up and. Trust me, using an emulator on a mouse and keyboard configuration is not the easiest thing ever. So please bear with me as I flip through awkwardly to get to 21. I just went backwards, I think. And hopefully the clock stays at 320. OK, done and done. Gravy, one minute from now. That is going to be nice. Now, one thing I want to point out before the alarm goes off and is really annoying, uh, if you go into settings, things look a little bit different. You'll notice right away that the Bluetooth button, the toggle switch, uh, has been revamped a little bit. Just kind of a small touch. So if we turn it on, slides over to the side. OK, here's the alarm. So I'm going to pretend like I don't hear it. And let's see if I go into notification tray, if I can do anything with this. OK, good. It's still up in the notification tray. Now, there's a gesture that you do uh, in order to get more information. And this, this might not even be activated for this program yet or for the alarm app. So you're supposed to do two finger touch. And obviously, in the emulator, you really can't do that. So uh, if I kind of click and tap on it, app info comes up. That's actually kind of different, isn't it? Uh, but there's, there's not much I can do. I can swipe it off the screen. At least I think I can. It doesn't want to swipe because it's snoozed. But anyhow, a lot of cool stuff coming with notifications. And notifications are a great way, a great place to come uh, to kind of see all of the stuff that needs your attention. And, and in, in uh, Android 4.1, it gets even better. So let's click around just a little bit more, see if we see any other changes. Again, a lot of the other changes we really can't show you because this is an emulator. Uh, one of the biggest changes is the addition of Google Now, which is an interesting location-based 
app thing that shows you, uh, tries to guess what kind of information you would need based on your calendar availability, where you are, and other variables. So for example, if you're at a restaurant, it will suggest uh, certain entrees for you because it'll know what restaurant you are, where you are, and it will look up uh, sort of top dishes at that restaurant. The way you activate Google now is that you take your finger and you drag it up from the bottom. And if I do that with my mouse, as you can see, nothing is happening. Uh, another change is with the keyboard. And there's really not a place that we can go to show the keyboard. Actually, maybe messaging would be a, a place to do it. So if I click New Message, and if I type message, now what it will do is as you're typing, it'll suggest the next word based on your usage or your history, kind of like Swift key, Swift key or really exactly like Swift key. Uh, so for example, if you type, um, I am going, and this might not work because it doesn't have any experience with how I type, going to the, let's say that the, uh, the Android 4.1 has, has realized that I go to the gym a lot, and I type the message, I'm going to the gym. Supposedly, it would show you the next, the next word before you finish typing the previous word. So that's kind of a cool feature. Uh, so let's see if there's any other things that we can show you uh, before cutting off this video. Again, there's a lot we can't show you just because it's an emulator. Uh, another new thing to Android 4.1 is that it's got a Siri-like kind of assistant, uh, which just means that you can use the little voice search button, which actually isn't here right now, uh, to do things like ask for information or do all those Siri type things. Uh, but as, as you can see, it's not included in this emulator. I'm wondering if you can move around this Google search bar or if it's persistent like an ice cream sandwich. And yeah, it looks like it's persistent. It looks like you can't uh, move it around. It's just there all the time, whether you like it or not. But that's, that's why they have third party launchers. Let's jump into the camera app real quick and see if we can notice any sort of changes. That looks really weird. Uh, things look pretty much the same. The camera does have some new uh, features in Jelly Bean, uh, but nothing we can really show off here in just an emulator. And let's see if there's anything interesting with the multitask UI. Again, hopefully this is a place that has smoothed up a lot because an Android ice cream sandwich, it's hit or miss whether that's going to be smooth when you hit the multitask UI. Usually it is miss. So there's a, there's a lot to show you actually when we get a device in and we can sit down with the device and show you. It will be a matter of probably days uh, until the development communities get jelly bean, at least in a rough form, on some devices like the Galaxy Nexus, the, Gal uh, the, the Nexus S, probably even the Galaxy S2, a lot of the popular phones. So keep an eye out on Pocket Now. We're going to be keeping an eye out for you. And of course, uh, in mid July, you'll get jelly bean over the air if you've got a Galaxy Nexus and a Nexus S. And uh, devices in the future will ship with jelly bean, of course, as things tend to go. Uh, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and we'll put some instructions in the description on how to get this working on your computer if you want to mess around with the emulator. Thanks for watching. That's it for now.